guys um, this is just uh, my video on the TiVo Michelangelo I'm gonna call it the uh, the good bad and the ugly so uh, yeah here's a, a mini review and my final um, thoughts on the TiVo Michelangelo so here we go the good points okay number one the price £150 in the UK which is very reasonable um, you get the printer intact ready to print by putting on the feet and um, checking everything and uh, you're ready to go so for £150 a whole printer compact sturdy small design so for that I think is a, is a winner £150 all together and you can pick it up take it where you want and uh, yeah I, I don't think there's much else on the market I've seen the Ender 2 the Ender 3 coming on but to be honest I, I prefer this this design so for me the price and the design is, is a winner uh, number two um, the size of it 150 mil by 150 mil by 150 mil build area well you know it's a small printer you you know you're only paying 150 pound or, or, or thereabouts and I think 150 by 150 by 150 volume is more than enough for what most people are going to want on their desktop for me it's it's ideal it's brilliant for small things um, you know it's it's just ideal so I don't think the build volume is is much of an argument if you want something bigger then buy a bigger printer so it's for me that that's a, that's a great volume to work with and, and you you can do quite a lot with that size okay number three I think the sturdiness of the design and the simplicity of it is is a is a good factor of it I'll, you know the TiVo is a very common design with these sort of open build rail type systems so for me that's a positive these are very sturdy and will give you years of you know service and reliability if aligned and set up correctly which is something we'll cover in a minute so the open bill rail design is a winner I think it's it's what makes the TiVo so good that's that's what really is the mechanics and the basics and that is yeah that's a that's a plus for me um, on a fourth point of that really that it is very well made um, the box is well made it's you know it's well put together it's been sandblasted and powder coated the top plates are up powder coated the rails are good quality the plates and everything on this machine is yeah they're, they're they're good quality they're quite thin they could do with being a little bit thicker but they they do work and 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 I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give a negative point for that so I think the build quality is very very good for the price excellent okay um, number five I think it has to be the results the results that you get off this machine if it's set up correctly and everything's tensioned correctly and aligned correctly and it's running well you will get amazing results off this machine every time all day all week um, I can't fault the way it runs once it you know is set up correctly this one here that I've sort of played with and tensioned everything and adjust the alignments I mean this one hasn't stopped it just print from print from print and I don't have any failures whatsoever so yeah I can't knock it really it's absolutely amazing so the results on this machine are, are awesome okay the final point for a good point I suppose is maintenance now for me I run these things flat out and they're gonna see some hours use in a very short space of time and for me I've noticed some maintenance issues already and it's to do with the alignment but in terms of maintenance on a whole there isn't much you'll need to do with these printers other than clean the channels out 
and check the, the alignments of these V-groove wheels and you can see this one there is a uh, some build up of debris on that one already sorry but the camera flash has just gone off so obviously cleaning of the, the wheels cleaning of the V-grooves and uh, checking tensions is obvious for any sort of printer really but so that's the only maintenance thing you'll really come across I think um, okay I'm gonna go on to the bad points now there's there's not many of them but it's just I think yeah I, I you know you can't list all the good things and not and, and ignore some of the bad things that I think are uh, probably more prevalent than than they appear okay let's let's go on the, the bad points simple then number one no spool holder well to me, okay, you don't get a spool holder, it's not a big deal, uh, it doesn't matter to me, I'll make one or, you know, I'll improvise, but I suppose some people that have only got one printer and buy this one printer to use it on their desk, you're going to need a spool holder and it may hinder you from printing the minute that you get your printer, so yeah, a, a spool holder would be nice, but to me it's not a big deal. Um, no heated bed so number two no heated bed well when you buy this printer you know it doesn't come with a heated bed and you know it's mainly for PLA well that's the decision you make when you you buy it and um, for me it's not a problem that I only intend to really try PLA and some maybe some TPU a few other things maybe I don't know but for me I'm happy with the non heated bed and I think for the simplicity of it, the cheapness of running it without the heated bed is a positive. You've got a printer that uses very low electricity costs in terms of compared to printers that have a heated bed. So it's quite a cheap printer to run. You don't have that big heated surface and all that power and cabling to worry about. So, you know, you can leave this one in confidence overnight really it's not gonna catch fire and burn your house down I don't think um, there is that risk obviously it's an electronic item that you're leaving running so it's down to you to you know sum up the risks of it but I'm quite happy leaving these things running 24 hours a day unattended and um, yeah it's not so much of a concern I don't think so heated bed for me is not a problem but some some people may want the heated bed well I'm sure you can add that later on and retrofit something but it's not a bad point it doesn't advertise as a heated bed it doesn't come with a heated bed and it prints without a heated bed so is it a bad point I'm not so sure but we'll list it as one because in comparison other printers within the same price range do come with a heated bed but for me uh, you know it's a very small bad point the next one is bed adhesion now that's something that everybody that buys one of these is going to find is not great the original bed surface is really not the best I couldn't get much to stick to it at all um, regardless of layer settings and regardless of temperature and how much squish you put on it it didn't make no difference big prints thin prints they will lift and come off so I gave up with that straight away um, that lasted about a day with this one and um, you know I've been so on this one I use a, a sheet of acrylic which I've covered in my other videos held down with four th thumb screws and um, I, well for me this is probably the simplest solution you can print on this all day and uh, it sticks really well you take you undo the you know when it's finished you just undo the four thumb screws flex the plate off your print will come off easily you put the plate back and you start printing again and if you do happen to scratch or damage the surface you just give it a light sand with some thousand grit 800 grit sandpaper and uh, screw it back on and print again no problem and uh, yeah this thing it prints like this without a problem the original print surface I don't think you'll ever get to stick very well uh, this one I'm using the Gecko Tech cold 
stick, um, which works very well, I must admit. It's, it is good. Um, getting prints off large prints can be a challenge, which is something that I don't like doing <laughs> when they're very large prints, because I'm worried about damaging the print surface, which is why I've gone to this. It doesn't matter if I damage that print surface. Um, I've got plenty of acrylic. It takes five minutes to make another plate, and um, this print, you know, this print has probably done uh, 40, 50 prints on that plate. You can see it's had a few sand sandings, but it is still there. 40, 50 prints later, and I'm sure it will still be the same plate in 40, 50 prints time. Whether the you'll get the same performance out of the Gecko Tech or something like that, I've no idea. Only time will tell. But anyway, guys, bed surface on the TiVo Michelangelo from stock is not a very good surface. Um, this one I've totally removed. This one I've just stuck the Gecko Tech on top, and this one prints great on the Gecko Tech. It's just a challenge to get large prints off. Okay. So that's number three, which is bed surface. I'm now going to go cover the worst thing that I think is the problem for me, and I'm going to class this the ugly. And this is bed alignment and alignment in general. This one, which I've put Gecko Tech on, I've had no problem in getting the prints to stick, but I have noticed some issues with it over time printing. Um, and what I found out it the problem is, is this rail, which is mounted, sorry, there on those slots with the T-nuts behind, is just not tight enough. From stock and factory, I can twist this rail just, just by pushing up and down ever so slightly. So the rail will move, and of course that just throws the bed level out. But I've What's happening over time, as the stepper motor is pulling this carriage backwards and forwards, the rail is slowly dropping. And I wondered what it was at first, but it didn't take long to realise what it, the problem is, and that is this rail just isn't tight enough and it's slowly dropping over time. I didn't notice it with this one, because I, straight away I changed the belt to a uh, polyurethane belt, and I changed the T-nuts in the back and the screws in the back to some stainless ones. I've, I found this, the screws on the TiVo, they're, um, they're not exactly the hardest material. So let's try and see if I can zoom in on there. Virtually all the screws on, on, the, um, on the TiVo were a little bit chewed up on the Allen screws from, from the factory. So the, yeah, these, they're not the hardest of materials are the screws or the bolts um, so I've replaced them on this one or a few of them should I say so I've replaced them with A2 stainless and they're just yeah you, you won't damage them with the allen key so easily and you can really put some tension on them and make adjustments without the screws um, losing their heads so a couple of them I've changed so anyway, yeah, this rail was loose. Um, I need to sort this rail out. I will change the belt. I will also check these idlers. One thing to check, guys, is these idlers. They may look great and they may feel okay, but trust me, sometimes it's worth taking them off, putting a bolt through the center and testing the, the idler to see if the bearings are okay, because a lot of them aren't. Um, it, I've had hundreds, well not hundreds, I've had lots of these, at least 20 or 30 I'd say, from brand new and the bearings inside, are, where they press them in, they damage the bearings and they're just not very good. I've checked all these and they're okay, both these are okay, but whilst I'm talking about the idlers, this is another point on the alignment. This one I've changed, so here's a bad point guys, you should really have toothed idlers, a profile tooth idler on these um, bed carriages. I haven't done it to this one yet because I was waiting for a batch of new idlers to come in because I didn't have any good ones. 
So this one's still running on the stock idlers. Um, so let me put my phone over here so I've got a bit of light. Is a uh, the flash has run out on the phone. It's got hot and it stops working when it's hot. So yeah, you get these idlers which the belt is obviously running on. Try and focus. But of course it's running with that side of the belt on the inside of that idler. And when you first get your printer, you will find that when you move the bed back and forwards, it will easily fall back into the place where it had been sat during storage. And what that is, is those teeth on that edge have been pulled flat and that belt has stretched into that position where it's been sat for so long. Obviously over time, you're gonna wear the teeth down and you're gonna lose tension and it, it's, it's not gonna do the belt much good. They're not designed to run on a flat idler like that. It's just not the way you run a belt on any machine. So why they've done that, I, I don't know. I presume it's so that they can keep these black idlers. Perhaps you can't get black profiled ones. So yeah, a good idea guys is to change these, possibly change the belt. It's not essential to change the belt. I've changed mine to um, like this sort of polyurethane steel, steel belt or steel core. So this is quite cheap guys. So you can change the belt, it's not essential. Um, nothing on the printer weighs enough to warrant essentially changing the belt, but I've just done it for you know, longativity and just just because it is a slightly better belt. You can stretch this stuff if you do pull it. You will feel it has some stretch. So yeah, change these. But while I'm talking about these guys, as I said, they're not very good. And what you'll find is you can have a big batch of these and you'll find there are problems with them. And by what I mean, let me find a bolt and I will uh, demonstrate what I mean. I've got a bolt here somewhere. Okay, so get an idler, brand new. Get a five mil bolt and hold the idler and run it and push to the sides. Push that way and push that way. That one's okay. Some of these are so bad you will feel them graunching. So that one's okay. Let me find one I know. One of, one of these isn't very good at all. Yeah, that one. Oh, it's lumpy there. It's lumpy there. If I twist that way, you can't hear this on camera, but I can feel that it's just, it's like sand. Absolutely terrible. And what it is, is whether I can get right in there, see why. See what's wrong with this one. Hmm, there we are. There we go. Doesn't take a lot, guys. Believe you me. See that tiny little dink right there. That is where they've pressed this bearing in, and that house that front casing is now pressing on the roller bearings inside. And now that bearing will not run properly. So that's one that's not very good. I've got a couple here that are really bad. So if you're gonna change these guys, you wanna buy a few and check them. And I guarantee you, if you buy 10, nearly half of them, they won't be very good. That one's, that one's not brilliant, Is he, he's okay. Anyway, so change these to, profile idlers and that will help things just trying to find a really bad one there we are look at this oh, come on. what have they done in there and yeah I bet this one feels bad oh Can you hear that guys? That is the bearing. Oh. Ah. 
absolutely terrible. A visual inspection you will probably see if there's any damage and you, and you wouldn't need to do this. If you see any damage on that face, on that bearing, in there, throw it, throw it, it's not worth it. For the price of them, get a few and find, find the, the few ones that are good. Zoom back out. So yeah, find a few that are good and change them. So that's one bad point, guys, is, yeah, flat idlers running on the, the tooth side of the belt is not great. It doesn't do the belt any good, and um, you, you'll lose tension over time, and it will help, it, well, it will stretch your belt quicker. So change to these, just make sure you get some good ones. Okay, so that's that point. On the other side of alignment, I found that the bed plates were bowing a little bit. Well, it appeared that the bed plates were bowing, so what I'm going to show you is this one is nice and square after I've changed it and tweaked it. This one I've started to do, but I haven't finished. Um, it is still a little bit twisted. And what it is, this is only a fine point, guys. It'll only... It, I wouldn't say it affects the printer a huge amount, but over time it will degrade how your printer prints. And this is a problem that I've found. So, okay, here's the cam adjuster that you get with the TiVo, or the TiVo Michelangelo. I'm going to zoom right in. Sorry, guys. There we go. So that's the cam adjuster that you get with the Michelangelo. And what that shoulder is is that's the shoulder that it sits on in the plate and obviously when you tension these up that's the only shoulder that's holding this thing square and stopping that from rocking backwards and forwards so as you tension this up and you turn the cam to apply tension it's actually twisting this in the plate slightly and it's throwing the wheels off of the line I thought it was the plates not bent square but it actually turns out to be this shoulder just isn't big enough to support the side load that's generated. Um, here is an open build version. So that's the TiVo Michelangelo version with a very small shoulder. That's an open build version that you get from open builds. So this is a genuine open build 6mm cam. And you can see the shoulder there is completely different in size. Sorry, I'll try and get the camera to zoom in a bit better. That shoulder is three times the size. <clears throat> These are cheaper cams that you can get off of eBay and AliExpress. Um, they're very cheap. And if you see, that shoulder there is, near, is as big as the open build versions. If anything, it's probably a slightly bit bigger. And you can see there, in comparison to the TiVo one, yeah, it's three times the width. And unfortunately, with the way this cam's working, it's, it sort of pushes on that thinnest point of the shoulder and levers itself into the bed plate. So I suggest that you change the cams to these ones with shoulders. And when you change them, if you can, if you can get open build ones, more the the better really um, these are the standoff posts that you get with a TiVo the same again not a very big shoulder here is a open build version you know the shoulders twice the size doesn't seem a lot guys but when you start to put side tension on these plates it doesn't take them a lot for them to just tweak over a, a fraction and then it throws the wheels off of a line slightly and then the wheels wear and then you get um, heavy grooving on the on the V groove wheels so one thing I, I'd say is a definite thing to change I know it's a pain to probably take it apart and change these and most people aren't going to want to do that but trust me it is worth it and it does help um, so that one's been done I've changed the cam and I've changed the standoff posts. 
this one I've started to do but not finished. Um, I'll show a picture of the plate that these mount on and you can see where with this one the plate has dug in or this has dug in over time and uh, yeah that's what made me change it to these anyway it wasn't for the fact I just done it because I thought oh well I'll just change it no I could I, I had the, the bed was slowly coming loose over time and I thought the cam was rotating and it wasn't the cam is slightly kinking into the plate so I changed it and that's improved things so that that's another bad thing that's on the alignments guys so that, that's that's sort of covers that okay the other thing I found was the fittings I've covered this on a video previously that's these Bowden tube cable fitting uh, air tube fittings so these are four mil to um, I think they're quarter BSP uh, yeah I think they are quarter BSP so I've changed them to them I'm waiting for some better ones to come in and I've changed the Bowden tube to uh, the Capricorn which I've done on both printers. Oh, sorry, let's try and get this camera out of zoom. So yeah, both on Capricorn and I've changed the fittings on both printers as they were both really bad fittings. Uh, so that covers that. What else? Um, oh yeah, sorry guys. This tensioner here, I think, is a bad point. It's just hard to attention and adjust you can do it with a screwdriver and a spanner and lever this thing out but getting the right amount of tension and then locking these up is a bit hit and miss it's just it this could be done with I don't know something a bit easier so uh, for me that's a bad point it's getting that exact tension right it is quite hard with that tensioner and you, there's not a lot of room to sort of adjust and get it right I would say so that one's a bad point. So yeah, that's one bad thing. Okay, on another point. This is my uh, final gripe really. Um, no firmware available. So at the moment TiVo have no firmware that you can download on their website. Um, I would have thought that had been up by now or there should be a version of it available. It's obviously only Marlin customised to suit their mechanics, but obviously there's some, you know, velocity and acceleration settings that they've tuned to get this printer to print well, and it would be nice to have those available to everyone that's purchased a printer. So my final gripe is I can't see a firmware available. Um, if anyone does know of the, the firmware available, please uh, post a, a link or a comment, and I'd be most grateful. So that's it guys, there's the good, bad and the ugly. I'm under 27 minutes, so I do apologise, it's such a long video. Um, I wanted to cover this a bit quicker, but there we go. The good, bad and the ugly um, of TiVo Michelangelo. An awesome printer, it just needs a little bit of tweaking if you want this thing to print well every day for a long time. So I, I can't fault the, for the value for the money, I just think it could do with some slight improvements. Um, most of those could be done during the assembly stage at the TiVo factory, but, well, it is what it is. I still give this printer at least an 8 out of 10. I'd say a push and an 8.5. It's an amazing printer, and I, I wouldn't put anyone off from buying one. Just, if you do buy one, check the things that I've said, and... Uh, this thing will last a long time. Okay, that's the end of the video. Cheers, guys. Thanks.